Hey guys, this is Tobias. Welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. In today's tutorial, we will look at a very useful tool available to you in Adobe After Effects. It's called the Puppet Tool. Incidentally, it is very useful for adding cool animations to a static image. Now, of course, I am not a puppet. I am here out of my own free will, saying things that I would normally say. Nothing suspicious about that. Note that this is an intermediate tutorial, so you should know the basics of Adobe After Effects like masking, keyframing and compositions before jumping into this one. But enough fidgeting around, let's jump straight into the tutorial. Here I have an empty composition. What I also have here is a simple image of me shot straight on with my arms spread out. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can find a link to this image in the description of the video. Simply import the image into After Effects and then drag this image into your composition. Since the image is likely going to be a little bit too big, scale it down so it fits your composition nicely. Cool! Note that, not surprising, there still is no animation whatsoever in here. If you toggle the transparent background, you will see that I have removed all of the areas around my body. When using the Puppet tool in Adobe After Effects, it is important to isolate the parts of the image you want to animate. Since we don't want to animate the background and we don't want it to interfere with our animation, I have removed it from the image entirely. Now let's get to the Puppet tool. You can find the Puppet tool on the right side of the toolbar in Adobe After Effects. If you click and hold this button, you will see that the Puppet Tool actually has three separate controls that help you animate your images. The Puppet Pin Tool, the Puppet Overlap Tool and the Puppet Starch Tool. As you select these controls, you will see additional options displayed over on the right hand side. Note that each of these separate tools has its own set of options that you can change, but we will get to that in a moment. For now, simply select the Puppet Pin Tool. The Puppet Pin Tool lets you add joints into your image that control the animation of the different parts of your picture. Ensure that your image layer is selected and then click directly onto the image wherever you want to place a pin. I will place one on my right hand and one on my right shoulder as well as on my left shoulder and on my left hand. I will also add one on my sternum and I will add one a bit lower, no not too low, just you know on my lower stomach. Finally I will also add a joint on the base of my throat and one on the top of my head. Done! So now what? Well, if you now select one of these joints that you added and drag it, you will see that you have full control over that part of the image. So we can wiggle my left arm around at will. Or we can select the joint at the top of my head and make my head bob from side to side. You can move any pin that you have placed on the image and After Effects will try to best guess which part of the image you want to animate. The way After Effects achieves this effect is by deforming the image using a mesh. You can actually show this mesh. In the options for the Puppet Pin tool, you will find the Show Mesh option. Click this checkbox to reveal the deformation mesh for the image. When you first apply a pin to your image, After Effects slices up the image into this mesh and it will use this mesh to figure out how to deform your image as you drag the joints around. If we zoom in on my arm, you will see that there is actually quite a bit of buffer between my arm and the outer edges of the mesh. This distance is controlled by the Expansion option for the Puppet Pin tool. If we decrease this value to around 3, you will see the mesh fit a lot tighter around my arm. We do want the mesh to fit fairly snug around our image so that the parts move a little bit more precisely and smaller gaps like the one below my arm are recognized properly. However, you do want to avoid making the expansion property too small. To show you what I mean, set it to something like negative 12. Note that this mesh now only covers the inside of my arm and the outside part of my arm is no longer being animated since it has not been included in the mesh. This is bad, so let's set the expansion back to maybe 5. Yep, that looks good and there's still a little bit of a gap below my arm. We don't need to see the mesh for now, so let's disable it again. And now for the coolest part of the Puppet tool in Adobe After Effects. Make sure you're at the beginning of your composition, hold down the Control key or Command on Mac and drag one of the pins around. Note that our composition is actually playing back and we can see a yellow outline showing us the shape of our animated image. Also note that the moment we let go of the control key, the timeline indicator jumped back to where it started. And if you now play back your composition, you will see that After Effects just recorded our movement for this pin frame by frame. 
Look, I'm waving. How awesome is that? Let's move back to the beginning and do that again. This time, we'll control drag the pin on my right hand. Note that as you do this, we can see the animation we already added to my left arm. This makes it easier for us to match up the animations for the different parts of the puppet. If we play back the clip now, both of my arms are wiggling around. It's starting to look a little bit crazy. Well, let's add some more crazy and have my hand bob left and right as well. Go to the time position where you want to start your animation, hold down the control key and drag the pin at the top of my head around however you want for a couple of seconds. Let's play this back and see what we got. It's starting to look cool and we're slowly breathing life into this static image. One thing I don't like however is how rubbery my body parts seem to be. Just try this. Grab one of the joints on my left arm and move it around rather brutally. See how my arm bends like a piece of rubber? Now while this might be what you want, in many cases it's not. And for those situations we can use the puppet starch tool to tell After Effects how stiff we want certain parts of our puppet to be. Go over to the menu bar and select the puppet starch tool. After Effects will overlay an outline of the original image onto the preview window. Let's go back to the beginning of the composition where my pose was a little bit closer to this original outline. The puppet starch tool also uses a mesh to do its work, but the mesh it uses is actually different from the one used by the puppet pin tool. Tick the show mesh option to reveal it. Let's zoom in a little bit on my right arm. We want certain sections of my arm to be stiff like the section from my shoulder to my elbow, from my elbow to my wrist and from my wrist to the tip of my fingers. Simply click in the middle of my forearm to add a starch point to your puppet. Now each starch point has an amount that defines the strength with which the starch will be applied. As you change this property, the opacity of the starch color will indicate how strong the starch is. I usually like to leave the amount around 15%. On the right side you will find the extend property. This property defines how far from the starch point the stiffness will affect the puppet. If you lower the extend you will see the starch move closer towards the starch point from where it originates. As you increase the extend the starch will reach further and further away from the starch point. I want the area of starch to be big enough to cover the center of my forearm from my wrist to just below my elbow. You can also drag starch points around on your puppet to reposition them. Keep an eye out on where the starch is actually being applied as it will affect how your puppet animates. I will position it right here. Now add another starch point on the outside of my shoulder. Let's drag it up just a little bit. You want to leave a small area without starch just over the elbow so that the arm can actually bend. Finally let's add another starch point to the end of my hand. Cool, now let's see what this actually does. Go back to the menu bar and select the puppet pin tool again. Then select and drag around the pin we placed on my right hand. Now that looks much better. The arm moves much more like you'd expect an arm to move and it doesn't bend like a big piece of rubber anymore. Zoom out and compare this to how the left arm moves. You will immediately see the difference the starch makes to the way the puppet behaves. Let's quickly add some more starch to a few other elements of the puppet to make the whole me move a little bit more realistically. Add a starch point on my left and my right midsection and add the same starch point we added to the right arm to the left. Ensure that the starch areas don't actually touch each other by decreasing the extent if required. If two starch areas touch each other, the puppet tool will not be able to bend that part of the image at all. If we now go back to the puppet pin tool and drag my arms around, this looks pretty good I'd say. It's not perfect but hopefully you can start to see the possibilities. Actually, I'm just noticing that my head still deforms like a piece of jelly so let's starch up my head so it can't be deformed quite so cartoony. Just add a starch point at the top of my head and increase the extent until most of my head is covered. Cool, that's much better. As you animate your puppet just watch out that you don't push the pieces of your puppet into each other or drag them out too far or you may get some really funky looking results. Now the last thing I want to show you is how to deal with scenarios in which parts of your puppet overlap each other. Make sure the puppet pin tool is selected and add another joint to my right elbow. Now move my right hand, um, okay I'm just noticing that my elbow actually has a big crack in it. This is caused by there being too much starch around my elbow so After Effects can't actually bend my elbow and it kind of looks like it's broken. We can fix this up simply by reducing the extent of the two starch point we placed on my shoulder and on my forearm just to give the elbow a little bit more room to move. Again it's not perfect but it's already a lot better. Now let's say we wanted my hand to go in front of my body. However, you will notice that when you drag the hand over my body it automatically goes behind. Now that's not what we want. 
To control which part of the puppet are in front and which ones are behind, you can use the Puppet Overlap tool. Go back to the Puppet options and select the Puppet Overlap tool. Just like with the Starch tool, you will see the outline of your original image overlaid on the screen and you can show the mesh used by the Overlap tool by enabling this checkbox in the toolbar. With the Puppet Overlap tool selected, click on the part of the mesh that represents my right hand. BAM! My right hand immediately comes in front of my body. What we have actually done is we have painted depth information onto our mesh that tells After Effects how to deal with overlapping elements of our puppet. As with the Starch tool, you can actually change the extent of these overlap points. If you decrease the extent by too much, you will notice that the parts no longer marked as being in front are being rendered behind my body. This can give you some weird results, so just keep your eyes out for it. Let's bring the extent back up so my entire hand and my forearm are in front of my body. Cool, that's much better again. The other property that you control for your overlap points is the in front value. This value obviously controls how far in front an element is. Any unpainted areas of the mesh have an in front value of zero. So if we drop the in front value we painted onto my right hand below zero, as expected my hand will disappear behind my body again. Let's bring it back up so it doesn't look like I'm scratching my ass. There are a few small quirks to look out for that can cause small glitches in your animated puppet, but by being smart in how you apply your joints and your starch, you can avoid most of these issues. But just play around, experiment and just have some fun with the puppet tool in Adobe After Effects. And that's it! I hope you enjoyed it, this, this tutorial! As always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just, just leave them in the section below. Any doubts regarding my authenticity will be disregarded. Please remember to subscribe, click on that like button, like, like button, and share what you experienced here today. It will make me very happy. Also, take note that I have a Facebook page and a Twitter where you can follow me if you want to see more. Um, um, until next time, I will see you later. Thank you.